Well, I try and start at the beginning and then bring you right up to date with my present activities, making pop records for the commercial market. Um, I was about five years old when I first wanted a gramophone, and it was one of those toy gramophones with a celluloid sound box and a key to wind it up. And I remember I'd seen it in the shop window and I'd asked for it for Christmas. And as quite often happens, my wish came true and I got this gramophone for Christmas with some children's records. Well, I used to play this all the time and it was quite obvious to my parents that this fascinated me. And when I was seven years old, they bought me a proper gramophone. Uh, the portable type uh, that used to be very popular about, well, 20 years ago. And um, uh, at this time, uh, I used to be fascinated with uh, making things under shoeboxes like puppet shows and slot machines and all sorts of things. And uh, I used to try and experiment with my gramophone and I discovered if you play the record at the end on the run out groove, you could shout down the sound chamber and the sound would be imprinted in the grooves. And I thought that I discovered something marvelous. And of course, I was really doing just what uh, Edison had discovered years before. But anyway, this became not only a hobby, but uh, it used to take up most of my time. I used to go around old record shops in Gloucester and old sales room and buy up lots of gramophone records, a lot of which I still have at home in my attic. <laughs> I'll tell you more about that later. Anyway, uh, this went on until I was about 13 years old and uh, discovered uh, that uh, it had changed over to I wanted a magnetic pickup which I connected to the gramophone and uh, uh, then I discovered uh, that I wanted to amplify this, and I, I made my first one-valve radio, and then of course my one-valve first one-valve amplifier. And by the time I was about fourteen, I'd sold my treasured possession, a cine camera, and I bought my first amplifier, seven pound ten, I remember, and. The war was on at this time, and uh, I used to play records for dancing too, mainly bits of Sylvester and different things, uh, different records that were very popular then. And I think it, this is when it be, uh, I began to get an ear for the type of music the public liked, something with a good, solid rhythm and uh, with a tune forced home. And um, I also naturally began to collect a lot of radio gear and and I soon found that my entertaining with gramophone records became very popular around Gloucestershire and uh, I was in pretty big demand. Uh, at one time, uh, to such an extent that I used to have to employ some other friends of mine, uh, to operate gear, say on an August back holiday, they would be at Huntley, I'd be in Gloucester, and somebody else would be at Newin. And um, uh, same this, by this time I was about 16, I used to provide music for amateur dramatic societies. I remember a play like The Ghost Train, and uh, uh, Oh, The Portrait Guys, and lots of plays and I used to go out of my way to provide the right sort of music for them and the right sound effects. Uh, my father was an estate agent and naturally wanted me to to be the same, but uh, I, my head was always in radio books and audio books and uh, uh, so they used to let me work in a radio shop in my spare time. And then I went in the forces when I was 18 and uh, became a radar mechanic. And my two years in the RAF was taken up by learning as much as possible about radar. And also I was pretty handy around the camp at repairing radios and uh, uh, record players. When I came out, uh, in the meantime my father had died, I decided that I must take the plunge and move to London 
and take a job uh, connected with recording because during my time in the services I experimented with wire recorders and uh, uh, disc cutting and uh, this really fascinated me more than anything else. And so I came to London and took a job for one week in a, a film dubbing room which I must say I disliked because there was nothing creative in it. And I left this to take a job in Stone's radio shop in Edgware Road. And uh, I kept this job for two months. Then I saw the International Broadcasting Corporation were advertising for an engineer, a TV engineer. So I went along and I discovered it was uh, operating a closed circuit television setup. Uh, this was before commercial TV had started. And I took the job. After about a couple of weeks, I was invited to go on one of the Luxembourg shows, People Are Funny, which was then uh, the chief engineer was Tig Rowe, who is now at Associated Rediffusion, I believe. And uh, after a couple of weeks, uh, I, was, I was put in charge of the show itself. Um, of course, this was a great honor for me, and I really did work extremely hard to keep the standard of recording up, which at times is extremely difficult. And uh, by the way, this is when I first met Mr. Orders, who would come along to a show at Torquay to take some particulars. And uh, I remember we had a, a long, long discussion about the different gear we were using. Well, at the same time, uh, when I arrived back in London in the week, I was put on some uh, pop recording sessions. Uh, the first one, I believe, was for Pi. It was uh, Ted Hockridge record. And uh, uh, about my third recording became a hit. It was uh, uh, by Frankie Vaughan. It was called Green Door. Uh, after that, Phillips used to use me almost entirely, and also Pi. And I built up quite a reputation of being able to record pop records. Uh, this coupled with my weekend activities with the show just to keep me terribly busy and uh, it got to the stage where I began to feel that um, I had reached about as far as I could get at IBC and one day Dennis Preston suggested would I like to work with him well Dennis Preston is an ind independent disc producer and uh, uh, handles artists like Ackerville, Chris Barber Mike Preston, and uh, after a little bit of thought, I, I decided to take the job with him, and um, he had a small office then in Denmark Street. I found a small room in Newman Street with and bought an old magnifon editing machine, and I spent most of my time editing the recordings we'd made at IBC. They were Lonnie Donegan hits and Johnny Duncan and well quite a stream really I, I recorded Teddy Fleur and uh, Val Penny Blues all the Duncan hits and the list of uh, actual hits I've recorded reaches about 40 um, this is in the last four years 